conversation at one time and the, the sense of this is don't let her kid you she fear, memorized the entire book the fear that um, of the Lord is to depart from evil the people that got well you know uh, uh, you know the natural man can't receive the things of God I just read an account I thought Tyler you sent it um, through something but Again, if we read this a while back, the Finney revivals, when God was dealing with people by His Holy Spirit coming and bringing conviction, there was a fear from the Lord on people. They were experiencing God's Spirit. It wasn't, oh, well, my God's a God of love, and that means nothing. There was a fear from the Lord, people writhing. This was the work of God's Spirit. This was reality, not some man-made reality that we make for ourselves an imagination of what's in heaven above. And if you look, I've been reading through Jeremiah, if you look through Scripture, God's judgment on Israel was a fearful thing. The Assyrians coming, just reading and the people that were going, oh, no, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. You know, our God's given us this land, and it's ours. And the king imprisoning Jeremiah because he said, no, you go with this. You go with the you know people that are coming against you. You go along with them, and you stay in the land, and then God's going to bring you back. God's judgment was on his own people. It says in, I think it's Jeremiah 2 that it says, not Jeremiah chapter 2, but in Jeremiah also it says, and I've quoted it before, you're trusting in deceptive words, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Are you free? And then he lists to commit adultery, to commit this, to do all these things. Have you been set free and that's what freedom looks like? Is that what it looks like? 2 Corinthians 5 talks about knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. And it talks about knowing that we will stand before the judgment seat of God Christ. It's not a God that we make up in our own image. It's a God that's the full counsel of God. Ten shekels in a shirt. That's a good one to listen to. The presumption that I, in my higher criticism of God, can sit and go, well, this is the way God's going to be for me because this is the imagination I've made him into. To me, that if heaven, I said this recently, if heaven and earth fled away from his presence, that says a lot. He is wholly separate. But he's fully holy love. But it's not loving like this. I've used this example before. You see a father with his family at a restaurant, and the father's feeding his face and indulging himself while his children are running rampant through the place. You wouldn't dare say, that's a good father. You would say, that's not a good father. That father in his own Self-indulgence is destroying his children. He's destroying them because he's letting them lose. Well, we have a good heavenly father. And I know that he is, it says he desires all to come to the knowing of him. All, <clears throat> not some, not just the predestined, those that are predestined are predestined to be formed into the life of his son, conformed into that likeness. That's what they're predestined for. That's what all mankind was predestined for. It's the Spirit of God working in us. But when the Spirit of God is really working in someone's life, the way up is first down. I didn't come to the Lord because everything was great. I came to the Lord knowing ere I was undone. I know that his story is similar. To enter the kingdom 
I have to become bankrupt and recognize that's the reality of who we are, who mankind is, not in our arrogance saying, well, God, you're going to conform to my image that I have of you. And it's just looking at Scripture and re going through Revelation, just spending that time, I thought the thing I came away with is, I know this one that I will stand before. But it's a fearful thing to not know him and know you're going to stand before him. And that's what God's calling all of men kind to, to know him. He's provided the way we can stand before him. Put on Christ. <laughs> He's provided what we need in love for us. He could have just left us and never brought re redemption into this earth and left us in our undone state. Worthy for the, the uh, trash heap, worthy to be thrown out, you know, they're good for nothing, because there wasn't anything there of life. And I just, to me, it's a serious thing, it, but it takes time to sit and, Lord, may I know what you're saying in these things, but, the, but may I know you. May, Father, I know you in Jesus Christ. That's eternal life. That's living in him. And um, all this, um, to me, again, spending the time in Revelation and listening, and Revelation can be a book of fear for most, a lot of people, not most maybe, but a lot of people because it takes time to be in it and listen. But, but the sense of this is, I know him. And I, I don't have to be afraid. It's not a blanket. Well, I'm not afraid. It's not that. It's a reverent, reverence of I know who I will stand before. It says to the church of Sardis, Tyler was mentioning how um, Ludi, um, what's his first name? Eric. Feels like they're, they're out calling to the church of Sardis to wake up. And I felt like the church of Sardis has come to mind so much in the last few years because it wake up, strengthen the things which remain, for I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. You have a, first part is you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. Wake up and strengthen the things which remain. And then it talks about our name being removed from the Lamb's Book of Life. We don't talk about the Lamb's Book of Life. You don't, we haven't you know, made that a topic here before. But it says our name <clears throat> will be removed. Wake up. God is saying that. I to need to stay in Him. I need to stay in life. I need to be dependent upon Him and walk sober-minded. Paul said, the end of all things, I mean, he said it a long time ago, is at hand, be sober-minded for the purpose of prayer. Prayer not only for myself, but prayer for others, that others would wake up. It says, wake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, that Christ might shine on you. That's God's call to us all. Wake up. Don't get entangled. Don't be overcome with dissipation. Don't be overcome in this life. I, could, I don't see that ever happening in Paul. He had that clear focus. This is why I'm dying. This is what my life is. I've given it to him. I have no other reason but to declare the things of the Lord. Wake up! <laughs> Wherever he was, he was calling to people to wake up, to come out of darkness into light. And that is the only reason we're here. If we're a believer, we're believing in him, then the only reason we are on this earth is to declare the excellencies of him who's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's our purpose. Anyway, just, it's a, it's a sobering thing. 
but it's the reason it's, well, you know, God's this way to me and God's that way. Well, you can't know him without listening to him and spending time and listening and it, you won't have a flippant attitude. A flippant attitude is because you don't know him and often that's out, I think, of people's guilt. They don't want to, I mean, man, man, to me, man sit as the higher authority to tell who God is and to tell what he requires in man's eyes. This is what God needs to expect of me. Anyway, what rubbish. That's, but it's because we don't, we haven't, we're not listening to him. This produces the fear from the Lord. His law produces that in us. And the reason men can be so flippant about everything about God these days is because there's no fear of God before their eyes. And that's, it says the wicked do not retain God in their thoughts. It's, anyway, that's all. Good, thank you. <clears throat> If you are a believer, you need to know what to believe and you need to believe the truth. You don't need to be believing fairy tales made up by people about God. You need to know God. And <clears throat> you, you need, you should, have a consistent God. And not this God that is changing all the time that can hardly wait to throw people into hell, um, that is vindictive. Um, we're going to go look at some more scripture here. Uh, we're obviously not going to come close to finishing this morning. A number of things crossed my mind just real quickly. We'll go ahead and, and go into some of these other things a little bit later on, maybe uh, tomorrow or uh, some other meeting, But because um, we're not going to be finishing up with this. But one thing I want to tell you to... <clears throat> and I've got a question. Um, most of you guys have um, Bibles on phones, okay? And that's probably what it's be, more and more people, that's what they're using. If I, one of the things that to me is, is fascinating is and we're doing this kind of this morning rather uh, poorly uh, and going all over the place, but is we're, we're kind of doing a word study. It, it, <clears throat> honestly, we've, we, we did a quick, in the blink of an eye, we did the word study on Sheol. It, it's the realm of the dead. That's the definition, and it's in the Greek scriptures. Two-thirds of the Bible we just finished with. Yay, hurrah. <clears throat> and... Uh, but it's, it's important to, uh, like with the word keep, uh, where, where are the, where the word keep and how is it used? And, uh, I, I'll actually show you just real quickly in, um, this is Revelation. It's only one spot, but the word keep there I have highlighted and, and it means that that's the word tereo. There's another word for keep, philoso, um, which is, uh, means almost exactly the same thing. I, I don't mark that one yellow. It, by the way, if you, we, we have some of these. If you run out or you need one, the, the markers that don't bleed through the page. Uh, it's, we have yellow ones. I don't think we have any others. We've got yellow. You can get pink also. Um, at least they, I'm told it's pink. Um, and so these are, are things, but my question is, um, I've got a list that is for the NAS and King James, and, <clears throat> and it tells all the places in the Old Testament and the New, the Old Testament where Shemar is, and knew where the word Tereo and Philoso are also. I've got that list. And 
you saw where I have that word keep. It's, it's important on, for words like keep, obey, even the word hell, because that's one that you're going to get asked about, because people want to know. That, and it's not because they're going, well, I'm going to get away with murder. And now some of them it is. But is that your business? You know, a, per, a person that is wanting to know about hell so they can get away with murder, whose job is that? Yours? You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, that they're going, oh, well, I'm gonna, I, I just want to go and play. I just want to make sure that you think there's not a hell. Well, let me tell you what. You're stupid if you're going to go with just what I say. However, if you want to bank your eternal life on what I have to say, that's up to you. But explain, God loves you, and he desires for you to have life. We're going to show that in, in, a, in a different way in just a minute. But um, my question is this. When I finish that list, I'm not quite finished with it. I almost have it completely done so that it can go to, in, in, in whatever direction. But it's a word study for all of these. Do you, are there ways that if we took that document and sent it, would, would you send it on the phone and then you go and if you wanted to mark, can you mark things like that, highlight stuff like in your, in your phone? Okay. Uh, now, the next question, this used to be easy when it was just a computer. Boy, everybody had a computer, you and you, you passed around the, the jump drive. Uh, so the question now is, uh, if we passed around a jump drive, would that be good enough, or do you want it on paper? And, w and would you use it, I mean, to, to, to go and, and mark these words in, the, in, the, in your Bible? It just, it, it, it's so that when you're walking around, I'm prepared. If it's a paper Bible, it's marked. If it's, if it's an electronic one, it would, I would think that would be the best because that was one is that you, could, you carry with you all the time. You lose it, and you, you transfer it over to the next phone or whatever it is that you, you, know, you need to do, and you've got it. Would, would you use such a thing as that uh, in your, do you care? Are, are you out there? Anyway, um, should I, is it better to give it to you electronically, or do you need it on paper? Okay, and so and that can be spread around to the various phones, and everybody can have that list, and then they can they can highlight it if they wish to. Okay, so I could get that list to you. Okay. I have a flip phone. What now? I have a flip phone. You have a flip phone. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll burn you off a copy on paper, Jeremy, when I finish. It. Okay. Um, now, okay, now with, with all of that, that little piece of, of information, I want us to turn. Now, Ms. Davis, you have anything else before we go on again? Thank you for the comments. I, she's, she is right. When you understand the love of God, it honestly, it's a weird thing. When you, when you understand his love for you, it actually brings a fear of him. It's odd. You know, you go, wait a second, this, and, and it's, it's not that odd when you think. For most humans, Remember, we, what's, what's the number one motivator for human behavior? Yeah. Fear. It's fear. The number one motivator for human behavior is fear. And now, what is the number one thing probably everybody in their life desires the most? Love. It's to be loved. Okay? Now, so we want to be loved. We want to be just somebody to say, I love you, I accept you, I, I'm with you. Yet the number one motivator is fear. Now, I've got a question. The, the number one thing that we want, that our desire, is love. But when you start thinking about those things that we just spoke about, love, and fear. Guess what your your greatest fear is? <laughs> to, to, to be loved. The greatest one of the I was talking with someone yesterday, and they were speaking of uh, talking about their fear of stepping out, their fear of stepping out into uh, <clears throat> various relationships in their life. Because, of, in other words, to let the guard down because of the fear 
They want to be loved, but the fear of being loved is also out there. Because true, truly, if I'm love or if I love, what's, if I'm loving, what has happened to me? I'm dead. I'm dead. If I'm loving somebody else, they're first. It's not me first. Uh, it's, it's the object loved. And so I fear to love, honestly, down inside. If I know what true agape is, I fear to love, but I also fear to actually be loved. Because why? I don't know if I can trust because I've been hurt before. And so my greatest fear is the love that I want. Okay? And so now it actually makes sense that when you experience and begin to realize volitionally, or, or not volitionally, but to realize um, intellectually, experientially, that's the word I'm looking for, experientially, you begin to experience the love of God, guess what another emotion that you experience at the same time is? Fear. It's fear. And it makes sense because that, wait a second, that's, you know, when it says you're fearfully and wonderfully made, it's, I think that's just another word for God put you together, but he made sure he put a few places where the wires are not connected properly, you know, because you need God. That's it.